jig. Your jig would be a dance you do. Yeah, your jig. <laughs> Welcome to DTLT today. The gig, all right. Oh, hi. 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 I didn't see you behind that camera over there. Yeah, how are you? I, I feel really bad, given the topic of today, that I'm sitting here, sort of swilling coke mm -hmm. with your corporate Pepsi. I am also, what, yeah. I have a branded beverage as well. It's UMW branded. But it's branded, branded but it's by the school. But it's a brand that I support. <laughs> <laughs> or at least maybe you won't after yeah. this. I know. I don't. I don't think this that, episode. I think I will because I don't think we've crossed this line at Mary Washington. So I don't think. What is it you're referring to, Martha? Well, so there was this article in the New York Times this weekend. I think it was. It must have been yesterday. Mm -hmm. About uh, if Tim was on his game, he'd be bringing it up on the screen. Yeah. But he's kind of lazy. <laughs> um, Doesn't everybody know your website? <laughs> yeah. Really? You can read it on my blog. Yeah. It's, uh, so it was about uh, <laughs> corporate sponsorship, specifically a freshman move-in at UNC. Well, it was, it was about corporate sponsorship in general, but that was one of the main examples they talked about, how American Eagle Outfitters hires students on their campuses um, to do a lot of things, but in particular they were talking about uh, helping freshmen move into the dorms, and so they wear T-shirts, and they give out pens and other swag, and, and they do it all like, under the auspices of like American Eagle taking care of <laughs> students right, right. and then they interviewed um, the vice president for student the vice chancellor for student affairs down there who has the very catchy Twitter handle of <laughs> vice crispy <laughs> because his last name is crisp <laughs> which is odd um, and and he said that he, they interviewed him and he said yeah he thought that this was really questionable this whole notion of um, commercial message being a part of freshman move-in, and he said it as he stood at the checkouts at Target while um, upperclassmen handed out combos and vitamin water. Because as it turns out, since 2007, the Office of Student Affairs has negotiated with Target to bus freshmen to the store for like a midnight shopping spree <laughs> in which they give away stuff and um, It'd be great if make it a lot like of money. A midnight shopping spree, the store was empty. Yeah. And the student like freshmen didn't know and then all of a sudden out of all corners of the store zombies, zombies. started coming out. Started started eating eating them. Them. <laughs> well in a way that's what's happening. The yeah. corporate zombies. <laughs> it's a little bit more subtle yeah. than that. It is more narrative. subtle than that. But you know, by entering into that agreement they are essentially selling their students' souls to yeah. corporate America in an incredibly like overt way. And I just love the juxtaposition of him standing at the checkout and saying, yep, that's really questionable practice. Here, have problem. a combo. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it's, so. like it's questionable because we didn't get a piece of it yet. Yeah. So, so you, know, you were talking about, you know, I don't know that Mary Washington has any buildings like this, but when you have the Johnson and Johnson mm -hmm. uh, Academic Center or something like that, you know, where you have sort of a corporate, corporate yeah. sponsor but it's not so much blatant as to stick ads all over everything or handing out, you know. Oh my, there's a bug on <laughs> Oh, I have a bug. Excuse me, Jim has bugs. <laughs> I'm being bugged. It's creepy. Uh, well, in the first thing that I thought of, <laughs> has bugs. Jim has bugs. He's crawling on a micro <laughs> microphone receiver. Well, you it, may be here. The, what I thought about was the story that we always tell of Marjorie Ock's class. Marjorie Ock oh, teaches yeah. a Venice seminar where they have sort of this online exhibit that they use UMW blogs for. And, you know, we always talk about putting your stuff out in the open and people will contribute. And so they were talking about ad space on the, uh, not the exhibits, but on, on the, the building, on the sides in of the buildings. In the San Marcos Square. Yeah. In San Marcos Square. Yeah. And so they were pretty much railing against this idea uh, on their blogs. And then the ad someone from the advertising agency comes back and says, look, I know you don't like this, but this is how this stuff is happening. This is how they're funding it. Nobody is just going to hand them a dollar and just say, here it is. So we're actually selling this space so that we can make this happen. Well, and so in that case, my understanding is that's how they are funding major work that needs to be done in Venice, uh -huh. you know, that's been, been, has needed to happen for decades because of, you know, rising water levels and sinking buildings sure. and so they need to save Venice and so they've gotten this corporate sponsorship so it really starts to raise this question of like we have allowed corporations to begin to pay for things because who isn't paying for That's these right. things That's I mean you the, know it's the like there's this vacuum works. right <laughs> there's this right there's this vacuum into which somebody needs to enter in order for certain things to be sustainable and one of the things it reminds me of is that like growing up around here in DC like you know, we had like RFK Stadium. It was named after Robert Kennedy. We had the Cap Center. Mm -hmm. It was named after the Capitals. Now we've got like 
the Nissan Pavilion. I don't know if it's still the Nissan well, it's Pavilion. FedEx Stadium. It's now FedEx Stadium. Qualcomm Stadium. Yep. yep. And all of these like major public yep. venues. Uh, the only way that they apparently can exist is by selling themselves. But at well, the same time, they siphon millions and millions and hundreds of millions of public money. Yeah. And that's the same thing what we deal with with kind of um, universities, right? Mm -hmm. UNC Chapel Hill, that's a public university. Right. Mary Washington, we're a public university. But, and at what yeah. line do we draw the line and say, look, when you start inviting corporate sponsorship in, um, there better be, I mean, frankly, I think there should be a complete separation. And what we should be doing is, I know this is going to get me into you know a lot of trouble in this media in this day and age, but we should maybe tax people. Taxes. I, I, I don't know, like maybe raise money so that we invest in Just education. Just as long as it's not the wealthy. We at tax. every level. <laughs> they need right? their money. I mean, as opposed to it's us. It's insane. Like we're inviting in these people. Like we need this I money. Know, yeah. But the fundamental yeah. problems, which is we have no tax structure left, which is actually to useful. Fund to fund anything besides interest. defense. Yeah, yeah. And then we turn around and we say, you know, public education's failing. We it's have to bring in Target. Problems. What else are we going to exactly. do? You know? What would we do with that American Eagle? Well, and what strikes what me, the and the other part of this too, though, it's not just, it's not people in departments inviting the corporations, and some do that, but there's a very much a predatorial aspect mm -hmm. to this where, you know, I was read it outraged me last night. I'm reading from my alma mater, Longwood University, where a professor is so excited because he was given 10 phones from BlackBerry, from RIM, to start developing applications for them. And so they just provided them free of charge right. for him to start teaching his students how to develop BlackBerry yeah. applications because that was going to be a marketable aspect for them. They were helping out their students by doing right. that. And the professor, you know, he knew nothing about how to do this. He was like, oh, well, I'm going to have to learn how to develop for these. But this is so exciting that we're able to do this. And, you know, just completely blindsided because I guess maybe he didn't have his guard up when this academic liaison from RIM just handed in these phones and said, we think this would be a great program right. for you to start and doing. And this ends up not being his choice or him saying, this is the best thing for my students or this is the platform that I really think yeah. is the best for them. And then the flip side of this, too, is what, when you're talking about that, what it reminds me of is years ago when um, uh, our license here on campus for what's the big, um, the big CAD program? Oh, ArcGIS. No, AutoCAD. not Arch AutoCAD. AutoCAD. Our AutoCAD. license for AutoCAD was was expiring, um, and in historic preservation, That's they right. wanted to um, purchase it. And the cost of purchasing AutoCAD um, to go in on you know the computers in that lab was so astronomical when you broke it down to the number of students and the number of credit, like you know like how much you were paying for these individual like classes or students. That it was just we couldn't justify it, but at the same time, I completely understood faculty members who were saying, "Yeah, but this is the industry standard. If they go out and they work in the industry, this is more than likely, almost, almost definitely, the software they're going to know how to, they're going to need to use." Okay. So you would think, in a way, it's like, wouldn't it behoove AutoCAD to say, "Look, this is a school that's training people who are going to go out and use our software and buy our software. No, they don't care. They're just going to charge you." Yeah. yeah. And that's the whole thing. It's yeah. like it's this like, idea that there's some anything. sort of like, yeah, like some sort of reasoning around yeah. there, like really taking care of us because no. they understand it's the better thing for the workforce. They work take for care of us when it's good for them. Exactly. Not it's when purely, it's good for us. And what was remarkable? I don't know if you read. There's a little blog on the internet called Baba Tuesdays. Mm. Great blog. And last night, um, I hear they're big on animated gifts. Yeah, big on animated mm -hmm. gifts, but also big on not education. very good animated gifts. And but. you know the great <laughs> James Baldwin, uh, black writer, American writer, 50s. 60s. He actually, in 74, had an interview at UC Berkeley in which he was talking about the state of public higher education, the state of corporate um, uh, wolves, as you were saying, this predatory nature of uh, corporations, and this idea that they don't do anything for the betterment of no. the child. Mm -hmm. And this is 40 years ago. Yeah. And what's oh, remarkable still, yeah. is how little yeah. has changed. And in fact, it's mm -hmm. just, worse. like you said, so more, overt. Yeah. Yeah. more overt. Yeah, more overt. To the really point where it's like we don't even question it. No. You know, it's, it's like, and now you wonder in 10 years, is it going to be like, it's not going to be UNC Chapel Hill. It's going to be like UNC Verizon. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> and well, people UNC will be, and people Verizon. Will be, and people will it. be like, but of course, you know, like, what choice did we have? Well, let's not, <laughs> let's not forget that UNC is a brand in and of itself, yes. too. Yeah. That's right. Um, they're on T-shirts, yeah. uh, you know, whether they are able to sponsor anything per se, um, being a nonprofit, you know, that. Well, Probably they do not, make a foot. They do have a football team, and there is a lot of money. In and football certainly, teams. like this, this whole issue within athletics has been a, a, insane for 
That would a be a long separate time. show. A whole other. Yeah. And UNC has had a very kind of you know checkered yeah. history as of recently with their football. So it's yeah. interesting to think about that. But I mean, the whole corporate state, right? I mean, what we're thinking about this idea yeah. of like we're living in a space now where the inevitability of thinking about education as a corporate enterprise yeah. first and foremost is coming. Yeah. And like we don't see, I don't see much kind of, uh, I think, organized kind of challenging of this notion of, you know, the education needs to be a corporate body because that's the most efficient and effective way right. to educate right. our students in the best way. Yeah. And I don't see, I mean, talk about data-driven right. results. And there's, no, the there's data? no results, and the people who are driving, <laughs> really the people who are driving that conversation are marketers, because they're really good at marketing this stuff. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and we, you know, their message is what spot is their on, message? and yeah. You mean what is their message? Liaisons? Yeah, right. <laughs> but in that article you linked to, there was an idea yeah. that this corporate marketing speak, and what was one of the things oh, that like, was, moved, um, the, moved the needle of the brand. Moved the needle, what does that mean? What the hell? <laughs> it, I, I well, still don't entirely know. But it's but even it's, it, it's it's incensing because it's moved the Geiger account. No, not the Geiger account. The, the, the yeah, he talks he talks about it as Geiger account. But whatever measures an earthquake. Yeah, the seismograph. It seismograph. Yeah. yeah. And so it's basically like not only is it earth shattering, yeah. but it's, you know, downright splitting the earth in half, the yeah. way in which they're reimagining. They're reimagining <laughs> well, the death weird. of our culture is what they're reimagining. And marketers, God damn yeah. bugs. <laughs> but what Where they're reimagining, hold on, what they're reimagining <laughs> is, <laughs> is they're reimagining the death of our culture. And at what point are we going to sit up and take it back? From these social media scumbags. Well, I don't and know. All of them. I don't know. Is it really takes necessarily all that much to, to kind of push back on the corporate expectations? I mean, what we do is we allow this to happen, and and it, this is this isn't new. No. We've we've no. had credit card companies coming on yep. campus, signing students yep. up yep. to get that get that to buy the get them right as they're exactly. beginning to yeah. So it's I mean it just I think it just needs to take a little bit of pushback from students just realizing well, something. Well and that I think was the most tragic thing for me in that article was the, they did interview one student who like with is with the Center for Social Justice at UNC who was kind of questioning mm -hmm. this relationship. But then there were lots of quote you know, quotes from students who were like, can you believe this company cares about us so much? Yeah. Well, and I feel such a relationship with this brand. And I'm thinking, <laughs> you don't have relationships with right, brands. Exactly. You have relationships with people. The one that was, the one that was pimping <laughs> HP to yeah. the extent where she was like putting things her on car. her car and, yeah. you know, just going to places and saying yeah. how, how great HP is. And, well, and, she's, you know, and she even company, says, like, her friends unfriend her on Facebook because yeah, she talks would, about HP so much. Should. I'm like, that and might be a sign. That's some of the pushback that I think that we need to encourage. But I don't think you're going to rely on students to make that conscious decision. I think oh, sure. some of the question has to be, at what point do administrators yeah. take responsibility yeah. for this? At right. what point do you step back and say, what need are these corporations meeting that we're not? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. going back to right. the cell phone and that thing, is, where it's yeah. like, you know, the students in this article I was reading were all excited because they finally get to develop on cell phones and develop mobile applications. And yeah, that's pretty damn exciting. Your university should be doing that. And what's the cost of ten cell phones? You know, yeah. two or three thousand th bucks. And that's it's like, the other part of this too. Like, if you if when I when I kind of go back and read between the lines in this article, it's like, okay, so what is the institution really getting? Like, say from the relationship with Target, because right. I don't think they're getting like a financial kickback. Mm -hmm. But essentially, what they're getting from these relationships is planned programming for students, yeah. like exciting <laughs> events and programming for oh, students. Like they talk about Red Bull. Red Bull um, or yeah, Red Bull is that the name yeah. of that drink? Yeah, coming yeah. on and doing chariot races on campus, yeah. and so yeah. now it's like, so of course you know, in excited. budget, yeah, right. in budget restricted times, it's like where they can't afford necessarily to do that kind uh -huh. of programming. It's like, look, yeah. we just let these businesses come on; they market to our students, but they also take care of this like student affairs programming that we can't afford to do anymore. Yeah. So, and in defense of Vice Crispy. He does. <laughs> I can't get over that name. He be, does say, like later in the article, not you know, to be confused with the brand. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, there is that. Um, he does say later in the article, you know, well, we probably need to be thinking about this more carefully. I would say that since they've been doing this with Target since 2007, maybe they should have been thinking about this four years ago. But right. yeah, and I think I'm mean, not saying it's an easy question, but how can you ignore it? But what's scary to me is what you pointed out at the very beginning is that this is so overt now. Like, mm -hmm. there is no even real questioning of it. It's almost yeah. like, here it is. It's almost like right. when Bush came out and said, we're going to war, and, like, here it is, and we have weapons of mass destruction. It was so overt that he was lying to the public. Yeah. It is so overt that this is kind of, in some ways, you know, a breaking of the public trust when you right, deal yeah. with these public universities. And no one's saying anything. Yeah. 
everyone's like, Everybody's I like, guess Well, it is. I guess that's what we have to do now. You know, and right? they talk about that's the austerity. The and yeah. I would really like to know, like, what level of this austerity, you know, has to deal with so much stuff that's going to be pushed through us on us well, and because everyone's going to be claiming being broke and... Right, because let's really pull this apart. It's like, okay, so Duke gets to say, look, we have Red Bull come on campus and they do chariot races. And like, so they make the argument, well, if we don't invite Red Bull to come on campus, then Duke will invite them on campus and they'll do chariot races there. And then that becomes something that Duke gets to market, is that they have all these exciting events and we don't get to market that. So there's also this kind of like one-upmanship that we've sure. talked about before yeah, that's, that's been the, happening the, in higher education for decades. Yeah. It's the climbing <laughs> wall. It's like, well, we have to have granite countertops because... Yeah. You know, otherwise they go on tours at other schools and they see granite town countertops and we look, you know, but you like cheapskates. Before when we talked about this this morning, <laughs> we look cheap because we don't have Red Bull yeah. posters all Chariot over the Chariot races and climbing walls and countertops. Well, That's what college is about. But the other thing, too, is like we talked about this. At what level is it the responsibility of the institution to... Not only like not partake, I think it's even but to combat. I think it's even more than the responsibility of the institution. I think it's the responsibility of the institutions. I think it's the responsibility of us as a collective community in higher education yeah. to take a stand and say enough yeah. with letting corporate entities dictate the future of higher education, whether it's in technology, whether it's in student affairs, whether it's in our gyms, our, our campus life. We need to define for ourselves what it means to get an education in America in 2011, and then we need to build institutions that support that. And, the fact and we need to fund them. And Amen, yeah, and the, Sister Sludge. The, thing. the fact of the matter is the money's always going to yeah. be there in some form and some, it may not always be there, but this this token line that, oh, we don't have the funds, oh, we don't have the money, it's just bullshit. It's, okay. yeah. It seriously is like, it's a cop-out to be able to say, we'll let that corporation take care of it for us, and we'll just say, well, yeah, we never had the money to do chariot races, but you certainly had the money to plan student activities, and yeah. it's a cop-out to just say, yeah, we're just going to leave it up to them and not do our jobs. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Or not build an infrastructure that can also benefit the community. I want to show you one thing. Hold on. Don't go anywhere. Oh, dear. Oh, God. Um, hold on. Hopefully we still have it. Yes, we do. In the most recent <laughs> EDUCAUSE review, there's actually, I don't know if you can all see this, but it's basically, it's called the do-it-yourself IT and then question mark. And the whole um, issue is about whether or not universities should take on their own, or outsource everything to corporations or do their own. And that's a larger conversation maybe for another episode. But where does like Hotmail, Gmail, yeah. and all these corporate entities yeah. that now own so much of our students' yeah. work and are actually becoming corporate yeah. entities yeah. in that, you know, this stuff is not hosted by universities. People like Brian Lamb and other folks in Canada still have a little bit of an alert up when they go to, like, Google Apps, like, hey, these are being hosted potentially on American servers, although I think now they made a deal they have to be servers in Canada. But there's all sorts of bigger questions about letting this stuff creep in and when you say do it yourself is too expensive or do it yourself is not under right. these austerity measures i think we lose kind of yeah. like our philosophy earlier yeah. so much of what the university is about well and it gets it like the example at was it syracuse that's using is it what chalk and wire or whatever the that's right syracuse. The, portfolio the portfolio system portfolio. is that you know it's like, it's like look yeah. you know when your students leave they can take their portfolio with them. They just have to pay us $100 a year. That's right. You know, it's like, at least with Gmail, I mean, G Google comes with all kinds of other baggage, but at least with Gmail, when they leave, they keep their Gmail account. It's not like all of a sudden they have to start paying for it, mm. although they pay in they other pay, ways. And we know that, right? right? But, you know, to just be like, yeah, you know that great portfolio that you spent four, year, four years building that you thought was yours? It's ours. Yeah. Unless you would like to give us your credit card. One hundred twenty thousand dollars later, yeah. after you've paid for that right. university. Meanwhile, like, the institution really? is paid, you know, through the wazoo for it. Well, we're running out of time same, on this same. episode, but I, I do want to have another episode talking specifically about this because um, I think it's interesting. This idea of how much can the university bear in terms of mm -hmm. systems and programs versus you know outsourcing right. that to companies that maybe or be, maybe not are better handled. Well, and how does the it. and how does the university define what those systems and programs yeah. are in a sustainable way? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what would be a great episode if we want to start getting a little bit experimental with DTLT today is go out on the internet, find examples of universities that are actually branding in different ways, mm -hmm. and do a whole episode where we pull up the images and make fun of them. Jim would want nothing more than to just throw <laughs> well, people under the bus. Yes, yes, I would. We yeah. could I mean, that's into, part of advocacy. We yeah. could get mm -hmm. kind of a rating scale going because that, I mean that's really what this what this boils mm -hmm. down to is 
is how pervasive these corporations Well, and maybe get. like the Fisk Guide or the U.S. News and World sure. Report needs to add a new rating that's like, how much has <laughs> this institution been well, we, <laughs> sold out well, that's, to corporate sponsorship? Uh, there's <laughs> something that I wanted to just touch Six on really- Six in the South. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. Something I want to touch on really quickly is that we know, we know this stuff happens and we do push back at times. And, and for me, the specific example is 9-11. When Mm -hmm. Corporations get involved in, and I and I tweeted a couple times about this, like this the corporate kind of tribute to 9/11, where they put their brand associated with you know the sacrifice and that sort of thing. Yeah. It, it just gets to be so cheesy, and they and CBS did a show with with completely mm -hmm. with completely commercial free, except for as I mentioned a, a cheesy State Farm ad. Mm -hmm. People realize that c if you associate a commercial with this and you make it crass, yeah. They they know that there's a downside to that. Right. You know their their brand gets associated with you know brought to you know 9/11 brought, brought to you, you by, by right you yeah. Know. So that Horror kind of stuff we do push back on, and and I think we can make this more obvious yeah. with by pointing the stuff out constantly. So yeah. um, unfortunately, if you people aren't a, a big fan of of this particular topic and Don't the corporatization in. of of education, then um, screw you. We'll probably be yeah. talking about it a lot because I think all of us kind of feel this way. Yeah, I think this is a theme we can come back to again and again. If you're not thinking about it and you're not interested in it, hey, well, push, then you're probably a zombie. Push yeah. back. You know, so, if, you've got, if you've got some ideas that, that say, um, no, could, corporations have to be involved in education, and, and if you can make a compelling case for why, lay it on us. Do something worthwhile, like buy Andy a MacBook Pro. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, that's right. My, my, the advertisement on the app's gone. So. <laughs> <Just do it. laughs> exactly. <laughs> all right. It's enough for this episode. We'll see you all later. Thanks, everybody. That's it for uh, now from the Corporate Cuddle Couch. <laughs>